welcome to the regular legislative meeting for June 18, 2013. Uh, the first item on the agenda is a presentation from Dan Marsh, the Director of the National Development Council, uh, concerning a possible transaction structure for the uh, new uh, Public Works Yard. Uh, City Manager, you want to say something before I turn the floor over to Mr. Mark? Yes, I just wanted to remind Council, City Council, this is a sort of follow-up presentation with a few more details than the first presentation that was uh, given, I think, back in October or November of last year. It is a possible uh, way for us to consider moving forward with the financing and construction of the City uh, Public Works facility. Uh, we have been meeting on a regular basis and our design folks and uh, all that stuff is coming together and uh, council will probably be presented with specifics on the project uh, probably in September not maybe July but probably in September now but we thought it was the right time to have NDC come back and get into a little more specifics on exactly how this alternative uh, financing structure uh, works uh, which is a little different from uh, the traditional public bid, Wix law, uh, public works project. So uh, I turn it okay. over to the Commissioner of Development uh, to introduce Dan and uh, give his presentation. Yes, uh, good evening and uh, thank you for having us here. Dan Marsh from NDC is here with us as the city manager uh, described. Uh, he is to talk, to talk about a financing option for the potential relocation of uh, the city yard. So uh, Dan. Thank you, Commissioner. Mr. Mayor, uh, members of Council, thank you for inviting me. Um, we uh, have a very brief presentation this evening. As the City Manager said, we're going to talk about the, the conceptual way of, one way of, of financing and constructing the new DPW facility. And I apologize, I have terrible allergies today for some reason, and, uh, and if I sound a little bit hoarse or, or uh, something, it's, uh, it's, I'll blame it on the allergies. Uh, <clears throat> but the, the goal is to um, allow for the construction of a new DPW facility and yard on Beechwood Avenue on a, a site that is situated underneath and near the New York State Thruway, a site which you probably are very familiar with. Uh, to accelerate the design and development process to meet your goals and objectives. Um, we understand that you are currently negotiating with Forest City about the acquisition of the existing DPW yard, and we know that there are certain time constraints there. So we've been working very closely with your design consultant and with city staff it's to try to come up with a way that, uh, that enables us to get the, uh, the project, if you choose to go uh, and finance it in this manner, to get the project up and uh, operational to be occupied by the city um, in advance of the start date for the work that Forest City uh, would be undertaking on the existing Echo Bay DPW site. Um, also, a, a, a process that ensures that you are in control of the facility but are not financing it directly. Um, the benefit of this, this particular process is that we are working uh, to try to facilitate the design of, of a facility that specifically meets your needs, while at the same time um, uh, accelerating that process to meet the timing goals that you have, but more importantly, to get the best possible construction pricing and locking that pricing in under a guaranteed maximum price contract. So if you chose to, to do this uh, particular project in, in this way, um, in fact, um, there would be a mechanism in there to control cost and to control time, and that would be something that's very important because many times municipal projects run over in time and in budget as well. Now to do this, we're, we would propose to use a local development corporation financing vehicle and still use the City of New Rochelle's IDA. Um, the local development corporation is a, a, an entity that was recently formed, Commissioner, uh, within the last year in, in, um, in the City of New Rochelle. It's uh, formed under Section 1411 of the New York State Not-for-Profit Law, and it has the ability to do many things. Um, one of those things is to be a conduit issuer of bonds. And those bonds would be revenue bonds, not general obligation bonds, and they would be, um, they would be issued through the local development corporation and would be fully tax-exempt. So they would share the benefit of a, of a lower interest rate. 
Um, in order to do it, unfortunately, um, everything that, uh, that is designed to deal with some of the complexities of developing projects in New York State tends in and of itself to be complex as well. So I'm going to walk you through a couple slides here that sort of outline the cast of players who would be involved in, in this process. And of course, the most important is the city of New Rochelle. Um, it is your facility and, and you will have to enjoy the use of that facility for many, many years to come. And we want to make sure that it's designed to meet your needs and fits the needs of, of the community. Um, but in order to build this particular project, there needs to be an assembly of certain parcels of property um, that, uh, that would be, in, in some cases, reutilized, in other cases, demolished for a new construction portion of the project. So uh, one of the city's responsibilities would be to acquire the site through a negotiation process with the, uh, with the landholders. Um, to date, um, the city has been supervising the design of the project using DPW staff and using development, uh, economic development staff um, and the outside architect that you've retained in order to design the facility. Um, so that work, as the city manager said, has been ongoing for several months now and, and we have not reached a conclusion, but it, it is a process that is well underway and everyone is very actively uh, participating in, in uh, trying to determine what this facility will be and, and uh, what it will contain. Now, in order to, uh, in order to effectuate the actual financing, uh, the land needs to find its way to the local development corporation. So once the property is acquired, the New Rochelle Local Development Corporation, who will be the issuer of the bonds, um, will in fact receive the land from the city and will enter into a series of land leases that would allow eventually for the project to be constructed. And the goal here is to construct it by controlling costs, controlling time, but most importantly to have this, uh, to have this building revert to the city of New Rochelle at a time when, uh, when the bonds are retired at no cost to you. So you're not financing it twice you're not financing and buying it. It's just another way to use tax-exempt bonds in order to build a facility uh, that meets your needs. Now, we've been part of these discussions, and we are one option. There are other options that you can look at. You could look at a general obligation bond and, and do this project under a general municipal bid process. But, um, but the city manager has asked us to weigh in on other ways that we've seen projects like this developed around the country and around New York State. So um, we would step into the role if selected by you and asked by you to do this to actually manage the whole process and to create an entity that would actually be the recipient of the bonds and construct the facility. Uh, if you could go to the next slide. The New Rochelle Local <coughs> Development Corporation, um, as we said before, is controlled by you. It's a subset of the uh, the New Rochelle Local Development Corporation would ultimately issue what are called 501c3 bonds. Those are tax-exempt bonds used by a nonprofit in order to build a facility that would lessen your governmental burden. And your burden is to build uh, a DPW site to serve the, the, the needs of the city of New Rochelle. The LDC would own the Beechwood Avenue site. It would never leave sort of public control. The LDC would issue tax-exempt bonds. Um, and those bonds would be used to build the facility under a guaranteed maximum price contract, which, which we, if we were selected to do it, would guarantee price and, and time for the city. <coughs> the bond council that's been working and helped set up the LDC is Robinson and Cole, and we have Alan Fox here this evening, um, Robinson and Cole, who is available to answer any questions you may have relating to the formation of the LDC, its powers, and its, uh, its abilities to work under, under New York State statute. But it's, it's a mechanism that's been used in many places around the state, and it is, in fact, a way for 501c3 projects to be financed since the IDA can no longer do those because the civic facility law sunsetted many, many years ago, and the state legislature never renewed it. So this is one of the, the ways that 501c3 non nonprofit bonds can in fact be issued in the state of New York. So 
the City of New Rochelle, the Local Development Corporation, sort of the, the two key players so far. What we would do is we would create a not-for-profit corporation that would be the recipient of the bonds issued by the Local Development Corporation. It would be controlled by us, um, and we would uh, admit at least one member appointed by the city to sit on the board to make sure that, that we were running the corporation in compliance <laughs> with, the, with the needs and desires of the city. Um, we, would, um, we would actually sublease the land from the local development corporation, and on that land we would build the building. We are responsible for time and budget. Once the bond issue, uh, once it goes to market, um, we, it is our responsibility to deliver that building for exactly the amount of money that, uh, that we have in the budget to meet your, demand, the, your specifications and your needs. And if there are savings, we will give those savings back to you after we would share some of those potentially with the construction manager for doing a good job on the facility. So anything that's, that's saved below that GMP price would go back to the benefit of the city, or at least a large portion of it would. The DPW through the city would, would sublease the facility from us and would operate it just like you would operate a normal city building. Um, it is, for all intents and purposes, your building. It just happens to be leased from us, um, but you would operate it exactly like you, you operate your current <coughs> facilities. If you go to the next slide. Now, there are a couple other entities that we are, we are going to introduce to this uh, uh, financing strategy in order to take advantage of lowering cost. In New York State, there is a requirement to pay a mortgage recording tax to the county. Um, in New York State, industrial development agencies have the ability to exempt a project from that mortgage recording tax, which is several hundred thousand dollars on this transaction. So we have introduced um, a for-profit entity controlled by us, which we call Community Development Group, DPW. Um, not a very catchy name. Um, but it is designed to, be, to uh, actually interact with a sublease uh, with the New Rochelle Industrial Development Agency in order to pass the land to the agency and back to the project and that would allow us to exempt the mortgage, uh, the project from mortgage recording tax. So it is a way that we've been working with Robinson and Cole to save some more money for the project, and it uh, and certainly is a, an expense that we don't think the city of New Rochelle should have to pay on a, on a municipal building. So those are the um, those are the uh, participants in the project. And if we go to the next slide, there are a series of, of documents that become part of the transaction. And they're sort of standard, but I want to stress the fact that it is a guaranteed maximum price contract. We will, uh, we will control the cost and we will control the time. Now, if we go to the next slide, you actually see sort of a schematic diagram of how all the parties come together. And, um, and you can see that the city of New Rochelle on the, on the right-hand side assembles the land and takes the design of the project through the issuance of a guaranteed maximum price contract or a guaranteed maximum price. Um, that is what the city manager was referring to when he said that we would come back to you with more uh, with specific details on what the cost of this project would be. The land is transferred to the 1411 Local Development Corporation that you just set up, the New Rochelle Local Development Corporation, the box in the middle. Um, the, uh, that particular corporation would ground lease the land to the not-for-profit, which is the box at the lower left-hand side, Community Development Properties, who would then sublease it to the for-profit, who would then sub-sublease it to the IDA. And that is there specifically to avoid mortgage <coughs> recording tax. So I, I, hope it, I hope it is not uh, something that, uh, you know, that, that appears too complicated because it is done all the time with IDAs. It just isn't done in this particular fashion for a public project like this. Um, the bonds are issued by the New Rochelle Local Development Corporation, and the proceeds go to community development properties, which, which is the not-for-profit. Um, we construct the project, um, and we make it available uh, by the fourth quarter of 2014, and the city enters into a lease for the facility and that lease um, would be for a period uh, that we still haven't decided uh, what is the right time period, 
but eventually what would happen is the ground leases would unravel and in fact the property would revert once the bonds are paid off to the city and it would be uh, a normal municipal building at that time. If you go to the last slide, it sort of summarizes that. Um, you control the facility under a long-term lease. You use it like you would use any other facility. Um, lease payments are used to make bond payments and when the bonds are retired then the chain of leases will uh, disappear and the facility will revert back to the city of New Rochelle. It's a simplification of, of the actual structure but that's how it would work and it's intended to benefit you and not add additional costs to the project. So that's that's what the city manager has been looking at as, as one of the options and, uh, and we've developed it to a point where we know it can be done and we know it can be done fairly uh, effectively and efficiently and and that's something that uh, that he plans to bring back for your consideration among other options at a later date. Well, uh, so. thank, thank you very much for the presentation. Um, uh, allergies or not, uh, you were able to speak with great clarity and we appreciate that. Thank you. Um, I'll observe that um, I think um, this may seem like a particularly complicated structure, one to the next to the next to the next, and I, of course it's appropriate and important that you spell it out in this fashion because the council deserves an opportunity to understand fully uh, how this mechanism would work and so does the public. But uh, I think it's, it's critical to underline a, a point that you made and that is whatever the complexity of the financing structure, in the end, it's pretty simple. There's no difference whatsoever from the perspective of the Department of Public Works and its operations. That's correct. No difference whatsoever from the perspective of the public uh, which uh, will uh, utilize uh, those services. Uh, the only question for the City Council, and we don't have the information yet to answer that question, is whether this is or is not a more sensible means of financing the project than uh, the traditional issuance of bonds. Mm -hmm. uh, as Council knows, we've already authorized that traditional mechanism, and so once we have some more hard data, we will then be given the option of switching over uh, to this alternative uh, means. And uh, I would imagine that will be based on a straight judgment of what happens to be in the best interest of the taxpayers uh, of New Rochelle. Mm -hmm. And the theoretical advantage here is we get certainty and predictability uh, without having to worry about change orders or the unexpected uh, sort of emerging in a way which increases costs as a project uh, proceeds. And that's the benefit of a guaranteed maximum. Right. Price. And and there are, you know, the, it, it is not exactly like your normal municipal bid. I mean, the, the, some of the costs up front are a little bit higher. The interest rate will be a little bit higher. It, it always is. But the added benefit of controlling cost and time uh, should more than adequately compensate for those for those higher numbers. And I think that's a very important point for you to make, Mayor. And so uh, by the time the council is called upon to make a decision, the staff in consultation with NDC, I presume, <coughs> will have those numbers laid out for us so we can do a clear and reasonable apples to apples comparison between the choices and make the judgment that we consider to be in the interest of our constituents. Yes? That's the plan. Okay. Very good. So, uh, Council Member Rackman, then. then in, in this type of a structure, who sets the maximum price? The construction manager who would be employed by us would guarantee that price. They would set it. But there would be, they are not performing any of the work. Um, they would be bidding <coughs> out each of the individual trades or sub trades. And those bids would be analyzed and they would select the most competitive of those. The beauty of the construction manager at risk for a guaranteed maximum price is that once they set that price, if they should go over on one of these, they in fact have to provide that service at that price for us. So we've actually fixed it in time. There are benefits that potentially could offer savings, but the most important thing is it will never go above that number. Okay. Now. We okay. We come to you. This is the plan. This is what we want it to look like. This is what we're expecting. Use the specs on the buildings, etc. You guys, your your construction manager sets the maximum price. That's correct, based upon your design. Based on the design, there are, you know four months into construction, a glitch comes up. Now the design has to be changed. It's going to cost more money. Now what happens? That's our responsibility. So even if the design needs to be changed, if something has to be shifted around, if you, if you, if you make, if the city of New Rochelle makes that decision, we didn't really want the salt dome here; we wanted it over here. Um, you know that would be something that would be an extra cost. 
but if in fact the salt dome cost a dollar um, in our budget and was actually five dollars in the bid that's our responsibility okay but now let's say they start the construction and for some reason logistically the salt dome cannot be here and has to be moved that's our responsibility okay yeah that's our responsibility where our construction manager would um, would have subsurface borings to, to look at they would know the suitability of the soils they would know all that information so except for a design change that your DPW may want because trucks need to go around or something right. and they didn't think about that, then any change that's necessitated by conditions on the site other than your use would be our response. That's an unlikely scenario. The design right. will be finalized by our design <coughs> consultant who has conducted and is continuing to conduct numerous conversations with our own uh, bureau heads and the people that will be operating out of the facility. So it would right. be unusual for them to decide halfway into a project that they need to turn left instead of right. Okay. Just I wouldn't be happy if they did. Do we get, this I guess is for, for Mr. Strong, do we, when we get our design, will they give us some kind of estimate on what they propose, what they project the cost would be prior to us what, submitting what, this? What, what will happen is our professional, the way I envisioned it is our just professional consultant, the design person, will come forward and I think we'll have an estimated cost for a traditional public works project as we would normally do it if we issued our own bonds. And this will be the guaranteed price, whether it's higher or lower, the same. Okay. That will be determined as the design is completed and the council then uh, will have the information to decide whether maybe it's worth uh, a little more to guarantee that it won't be a lot more or maybe it's not worth that risk you know we don't know what the final numbers are but as, as you know in a traditional project a lot of things that happen may result in work orders may result uh, change orders may result in additional costs this may be a little more upfront but it guarantees that it won't be any more than that so that that's all the we have to put all those numbers together and give you enough information to make the determination that you feel is in the best interest of the city. Okay, I suspect we'll make a recommendation one way or the other. Um, Did I, get, I got that right, Dan? Yes. And, you know, if, if it does come in below what is, uh, what is the guaranteed maximum price at the time you accept it, should you accept it, and let's say it comes in for $100,000 less, then the majority of that 100000 goes back to you to use for whatever. I mean, and, in a normal public-private partnership, that would go to the developer. But since we're not-for-profit, we don't want to take that money out of the city, so it would go back to you. Traditionally, traditionally, in in an arrangement like this, what percentage have come in on budget? What percentage have come in lower, in your experience? Um, for the projects that, that I have managed personally, I mean, we, we have a, a little over $2.2 .2 billion in projects not all of which I manage personally, but for the ones that, that I managed, um, most of them um, have come in um, on the base contract number without add-ons that were requested by the client at numbers below what, what the GMP was. Now, there, there is going to be a little bit of a fudge factor in the GMP because, right, you know, because they're... You have to you protect know. yourselves. Well, it's not only that, we're doing it at a, at a point when the construction drawings are not 100% complete. So, you know, we'll get closer to that, but, you know, but it allows it to move quickly. And, uh, and, that, uh, and as the drawings are completed, you know, we will be able to hopefully buy the price of the project out at a lesser cost, but we don't know. So. Okay. Thank you. That's Member Tarantino. Yeah, I have a couple of questions. Um, one of them is that what's the time frame of the bonds? Um, is it? Um, we would look at, and we talked about that the other day with the city manager. We would we would look at three options: twenty, twenty-five, and thirty years. Okay, and then the lease, whatever that is, the lease would end simultaneously with the bonds. Well, the, I'm I can't play it, uh, although I I uh, I play an attorney during the daytime on television. The if I answer that, it, I probably will get in trouble. Um, it, there will be the lease will be nominally longer, okay, than the bond term. How much longer it is, I'd, I'd have to defer to Mr. Fox. But it would have no impact on the city because it, it, the the lease rate would either drop to zero or would continue to be paid and then rebated 100% to, uh, to the city. 
So we don't want this to be, if you choose this option, we don't want it to be a finance lease transaction or a general obligation lease transaction. So uh, the lease term will be nominally longer than the bond term, but it will have no financial impact on the city, and you still occupy it as if you owned it anyway. And, and these bonds, there would be no opportunity to refinance them? Yeah, there would be. They would be. Yeah, you know, on several projects we've done refunding. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, that was one question. The other one was about the building itself. You said here, City of Nurse Shell effectively controls and operates the DPW facility. Uh, does that mean we maintain it? We're responsible for the, the structural facility? Um, or is the, that done the, by an The assumption company? that we've been given by the, by the city manager is that it's a true net, net, net lease, that, mm -hmm. that, um, that the city would, would operate it and do general maintenance and things like that on the facility as if you owned it. Um, the menu of, of options is open, you know, and, mm -hmm. you know, in some cases we manage buildings long term and we provide maintenance long term. Most of our municipal buildings, however, are net net leased to the municipality. Would there be an opportunity for you to give us that opportunity to see what the cost would be for? Yes. somebody to maintain the building. And, and the reason I'm saying this, city manager has said many times that we're not very good at, at maintaining properties. And, and the concern is that uh, you have a building that you're paying a lease payment on and then 10 years down the road we run into some major issues because we haven't properly maintained the property and now we have to go and, and borrow money to repair things that we didn't anticipate at that time. So, you know, just be an option that would be curious. It's, it's an know. option and we, okay. we would talk to the city manager and staff about that. It, it, it could be. Okay, and the other one? Is the other, pro there are other properties obviously have to be purchased. Is that done through your Group or is that done before no, you get involved? I'd defer to the city manager and Kathleen about that. We would that. have to do that. We would have to. Okay. Uh, you've actually authorized us to start the process on the properties. That okay. We would need. Okay. I have no other questions. Now, a, a point though would be that if you chose to do that, we would include in our bond issue the reimbursement for those the acquisition of those properties. So, I mean, what uh, you know that could be that it's anticipated that that would right. be. Uh, part of the of the bond issue. So, if the city were to go out and acquire, then they would be included in the bond issue more than likely. Just, I just want to follow up on something. That when we were talking about the, the buildings themselves and structures, what? How do you warranty these buildings? Because after they're built, you know, if you have structural issues with the building, for how long before uh, the so-called warranty runs out? Well, there's standard there's standard warranties on on equipment, roofs, and things like that. I mean, roofs can be twenty or twenty or more years. Um, if there's a construction defect um, that appears five years down the road, um, we would be working with the construction manager to go back and, and fix that. And sometimes it takes a while for those things to occur. We've been talking to a construction manager who we've worked with in the past, and we just uh, we did a, um, a magnet school in the city of Hartford four, five years ago, and there were some drain problems in the <coughs> laboratories and there was a parking lot surface problem and we went back and, and with that construction manager and, and they repaired that. So if it's a, a construction defect, then it, it would go for a fairly long time, not under any given warranty or state law. Right. It's just the way that the construction managers that we work with like to keep their reputation okay. strong. Well, so, I mean, if it's just normal wear and tear, no. But if it's a construction defect, it could be a fairly long time. Okay. That, Thank that, you. That can be fixed. Uh, I just want to go back to the leasing and the maintenance of it. Now yeah. You said that I think you said that you can incorporate cost into the bond to cover some maintenance. Is that correct? No, we would we could we could incorporate the, the cost in the bond to reimburse you for the acquisition of the property. We could incorporate in the lease uh, a number a number that would include some sort of maintenance and repair. The lease payment would be higher yeah. if they the were The lease payment would be slightly higher to do that. Understood. And if we have a 30-year lease, and you just mentioned a roof that lasts 20 years, then of course, within 20 years, we're going to be looking to replace a roof when we right. still have a 10-year lease on a property. Right. Now, what it doesn't usually happen with facilities like this, but when we do a laboratory, a dormitory, an office <laughs> building, or something like that, a city hall, um, many times we will be involved in supervising the operation of that facility and maintaining it. 
So we, we build a budget. And, and the reason that we do the structure that we do where we admit a member of the, of the community, the city, to our board is that certain decisions like capital replacements, repairs, budgets, need to need unanimous consent of the board, which would mean the city, the city representative would have to vote for it as well. And that's important for a lot of reasons, one of which is, although you don't own it, we want to give you a say in, in what happens to the building. Number two, the bond buyers are going to want to know that we cannot take a unilateral action and throw this building into bankruptcy and negatively impact them and you. So there are certain what we call life events that need to be unanimous, not just a simple majority. We you know, but, you the, but when the, we give you the menu of options, um, the different lease periods will be part of that menu. Right. Because obviously, the longer, uh, the shorter the le the uh, shorter the lease period, the more expensive the lease cost is each year. So right. That's, that's what I assume. Right. Part of the so we'll have options available to us. Yeah. Based on the, the years. Right. And, and our, our we're starting out with a with a base assumption that the lease would. Would roughly would have, would equal the debt service payments, plus a very small asset management fee that we would use to do our financial statements and and report to the bondholders and things like that. So it's basically debt service. The other question now is, uh, we have an outside consultant who's designing the yard, mm -hmm. and they're in conjunction with our design our DPW team in City Hall. Yes. Do you also have a design team that over that reviews it, or you just basically go on the design that no. is presented to you? What what we when, would, you, when you go out for bids? As yeah. Far what as we would propose is we would we would use your designer uh, for that. Um, no sense in duplicating those costs. Um, what would eventually happen though, because we would need certain privity with that designer to make sure that it's designed to the standards that that you expect and we expect. So at some point in time, should you choose to do this, we will take over that contract. Um, and we will include that cost in our budget. And we will still seek um, input from the DPW and from the city as part of the design. But we need to control the architect because we need to make certain decisions to ensure that the building is built. Uh, and that's that's design. my point, right? So you, you would be involved at that point until yes. once you go out to yeah contract. we we would we would I mean, take since it you over have something. multiple projects that are on your plate or if completed, mm -hmm. you have a lot more expertise in that field when you go out to yeah. bid it up. We're not construction folks, nor are we design folks. We're project development and finance. Understood, folks, so, but yeah. the people that are working for you, will yes, be right. people who are working for in us. In fact, Dan, they're, they're they're in contact with our they're in regular contact with our design consultant. Right, we we now. have we have meetings at least once a week and sometimes more with them. So. Okay. Uh, one more last question. I don't know if you can answer this, but if we go through the local development corporation, how does that bond debt, because we'll be paying a lease payment to you on a yearly basis, how does that bond debt reflect on our budget? Do we see that bond debt? I think I think your finance department would have to answer that question whether it's, it is considered debt of the city. I, I don't believe it is. I believe the way that gas. So this won't appear as a long-term bond debt from the city standpoint. Well, actually, it'll 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 appear as a lease. Um, so it'll and, it'll appear as a lease payment and, and the, towards yeah. our operating budget. Right, and and the rating agencies will look at it as a long-term obligation, but it will be a contingent liability for the year after the lease payment is due, and every year thereafter. Um, but it but Standard and Poor's and Moody's would look at it as a financial obligation. So it, it's not. You know, it may not appear as as debt under you know under your financial statements, but it'll be a financial obligation that will be long term, subject to annual budget and appropriation. May, so, I, may I interject something on that? Yeah. This is, in fact, this is not a a new model for us. Uh, you may recall that the New Rock Garage was originally financed by the city through annual lease payments. That's correct. And we recently transitioned we refinanced to, to and refinanced it, went to it bond and uh, actually got a lower annual rate, but the debt went on to our books. So it, it's it, in terms of annual... Well, we refinanced on the general obligation bonds. Correct. Because right? because that was in our financial interest. That's correct. And, um, yeah. Under those yeah. specific circumstances. Right. So, so again, going here, general obligation bonds seem to be low interest at this point because we just refinanced some long-term bond debts right. to get, save money. But yet we're taking a direction away from general obligation. And I understand the main premise here is to control cost, correct? That was that's the main premise here. Time and cost. Right. Yes. Okay. Yeah. But I, I just want to make sure I understand that it, it I mean the cost is going to be reflected in our budget. 
I want to make sure that it's reflected in long-term bond debt, which we're not sure it will be reflected. Uh, I, I believe it will show up. But it will re yeah, it'll be reflected not, as a payment because yeah, it, it will be a contingent liability beyond the year in which the current lease payment is due. Okay. So, but it, it will it will carry as a, a long-term obligation. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Councilmember Patel. Yeah, I have a <coughs> series of questions. Um, uh, in order for us to get an analysis of various options, who's going to provide the independent analysis of them so we can make an informed decision? Are you going to have someone outside look at the various options internally? We'll do it. I just want to know. I'm sorry. We will. Yeah. Okay. okay. When do you think we'll be getting that? Uh, this will probably be brought to you. <coughs> I don't know when you'll get it. The decision will be probably in September, I'm guessing. So uh, you'll probably get. Uh, I can give it to you the day before the meeting. You probably have to have it several weeks in advance. Uh, and not necessarily have to approve it in September. It could be take as long as you need to analyze it and make a decision. If you want to ask some questions about the distinction between the normal financing, which we already approved, mm -hmm. and this kind of structure. First, as I understand it, the bond resolutions which you authorize would have to be rescinded. Is that correct? If we adopted this? Yes. yes. And that would be a five vote or a four vote to rescind it? Four votes. And Und we understand we, we, we have an issue bond yet, I don't believe, but we, but we are authorized the aren't current cost right. now. For right. Well, if we authorize something, I would assume that we'd rescind the authorization so it wouldn't well, down the road issue right. bonds. Well, my point is only that we are using right. some of that money right. for the design. And secondly, um, if we vote to approve this, is it a four vote or a five vote? Four. four. Okay. And uh, another question is if we. Um, is, if you do the construction, the Wix law does not apply? It does not apply. That's correct. All right. Is there a, and that, I'd like to see that quantified at some point as to how much you think we'll save as a result of that, because that goes to cost as well, doesn't it? We've had, we've asked our, our, our <coughs> we'll try to narrow it down. We've asked our design people who, I think they said anywhere between 5 and 15 percent of the savings if you don't have to use the Wix law. All right. Um, another issue is if we have to go out, we have to sh give it to the lowest responsible bidder. You're not required to do that. Is that correct? No, but we would we would still bid each but of the trades. You're not legally required to do it. That's correct. Yeah. So when you decide who could do the construction, you could probably, in terms of the project, show some preference if you can within the certain framework to companies, people who live in this area. Yes. Because we, it's very important that we increase employment and do that locally. I think that's yeah. something you could do. To to the extent that that there are. Subcontractors that are capable right. financially. I understand that. I understand that. Um, we try to do that in our projects. Um, we try to include as, as many local contractors as we can. And another question: You mentioned that you're in effect guaranteeing the cost. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you know, we're hoping the economy is going to continue moving along in the various pace. But you get another bump in the road like 2008, 2009. What financial guarantee do you have? Insurance? What do you do in order to make sure? that should there be a significant bump in the economy, not necessarily in terms of external forces, mm -hmm. that you're able to complete it and not have us have a have finished project? Well, we, we would have a surety bond um, to, to, back, to backstop that. We would rely upon the strength of our construction manager, and we have very rigorous standards for that. We, we want only large, very uh, successful, and, and I, I deep understand, balancing. I understand that. I understand yeah. that. I'm, I'm not so, quibbling with you yeah. on that. But my concern is, if you hit an economic you know, wall like we did a few years ago, even some of the strongest companies cannot yes. succeed. Yeah. No. And my question is, other than the fact that you're dealing with a company that's a really strong company, what other security can you provide to assure? We would us? have a completion bond. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's see. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Councilmember Rice. The, um, the end date you said would be projected to be um, fourth quarter 2014. Yes. What would the corresponding start date be with that? September, October okay. yeah, of this year. <coughs> and um, so you, the construction manager would oversee the project itself? Yes. Have... The construction manager would be our representative and would oversee and hold all the subcontracts for us. Okay. And as it relates to subcontractors and hiring, I know one of the things that we're trying to do here in the city is provide employment for local residents in the construction trades. Would that be a function of you, your group, or the construction manager, or both? It would be both of us. I okay. mean, if, if you if you made certain requirements to... And us. And us. Yeah. And us. Yeah. Yeah, and, and the city. And this would be union work? We suspect that it will be union, yes. We, I mean, we're not. Uh, we're we're, we're not looking at pricing. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, as if it was a union job, we um, most of our larger jobs are union jobs. Yeah. Be hard to imagine. Yeah. Project like this. Yeah, I mean, I, it's too large of a project in an area that that is very strong with unions. I don't think that we would ever try to do anything else. That's it. Just a quick one. Sure. Uh, one thing: this property has some mitigation issues or hazardous material that's on it. We're I trying know. to ascertain what's there now. How does this play out now? Because we had the consultant here making a presentation. Right. He basically said that contamination. There is some contamination there, but. If the land's undisturbed, it's not an issue, but you're going to do construction, so you're going to disturb the land. Right. So, so how, just tell me how this plays out with you in conjunction with the contamination and conjunction with the Well, ob obviously, we want to get to a point where we know precisely what's there, and, that's, and there are borings that are going to be done on the site to <coughs> figure that out. Um, without knowing what that result is or if there are any uh, unknowns that, that the engineer is going to say, we just can't determine whether in this corner there's anything. It's kind of hard for me to, to answer, but but our, our goal is to is to include in the GMP a number that is sufficient to be able to remediate the, the whatever is on that site as determined by the environmental engineer. Okay, so you're and, going to and, get and, and we will and we will have a contingency for that as well. So that's something that we will you know that we will look at very closely. But it is two two things I'll I'll add to that one. What you're referring to, Katzman Tranguchi, was the original site. There are additional sites now that we are purchasing that are going to have to have environmental testing. But when they provide that guaranteed maximum price, if we go this way, they'll put a price in there that, uh, that you know, if it's lower, it's lower. If it's higher, it's higher. But it's their cost. Right. So that, that, that would be part of the grant guaranteed maximum yeah. price. And, and I and, I mean, if, if there was some, if, if all of a sudden it was a Superfund site, Number one, you wouldn't be building on it, so I, I don't think we'd ever get to that point. But, but our goal is to know with as much certainty as possible what's there, and that's what's being investigated right now. Okay, very good. Thank you. Anything else on the uh, council Just line? a quick thing, also, the, the uh, construction manager is an individual, or is it a company? It's a company. It's a company. It's a company. Um, are they compensated how? They're compensated a with a flat fee. It's a flat fee, not a percentage of the overall. Price. Part of well, the guaranteed maximum a, price will yeah, be. Yeah, it's a percent. It's a percentage. A percentage of the of the GMP number, yes. Okay. But it's a fee that's known at the, at the time of so the. So forgive me for asking this, but what's the advantage, therefore, for them to make the lowest possible cost uh, available to us? They no, in their selection of contracts. They will have. They will negotiate with us a twenty to thirty percent sharing. So, if there are if there are savings. Um, they could get 20% of those savings as an incentive to be efficient and build out the project efficiently. We would receive 80. These are numbers that I'm not sure we haven't negotiated anything. But uh, but for illustrative purposes, we would get 80, and that 80 would go to you. But part of the, the analysis of this would be that this includes uh, the guaranteed maximum price will include that fee to the construction manager right. as well as a fee to the not-for-profit corporation. Councilman is asking a question about incentives, not about uh, not about whether it's no, I know, that was a I, no. good response to it. So. I understand yeah, this no, question, I, but I, 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 understand. I understand. I understand this question. I was just trying to point out that that's a cost that will be included in the GMP. It, yeah, it has be to be included in the overall budget. Yeah. So. All right. Well, uh, thank you very much uh, for well, laying well, thank out, you for uh, having laying us out the option, and obviously this is something that the uh, council will have to revisit uh, in the coming months. I look forward to bringing a lot more information to you, so you can ask a lot more questions. Feel better. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Take my Claritin. <laughs> <laughs> right, thank you. Bye. -bye. <laughs>